Welcome to God's Food for Thought. We're talking about applying the parables of Jesus. And we want to remember that Jesus is the light of the world. You know, if you ever wondered why we have Christmas tree lights, well, it's to, it's to celebrate the light of life. Jesus said he came to take us from the darkness into his light. Today, we're going to look at a parable about the lamp and the light. In Luke chapter 8, verses 16 through 18, reading out of the New Living Translation, Jesus says these words to us. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. That's pretty obvious. Well, what's he saying? Verse 17, he goes on. For all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open. And everything that is concealed will be brought to light and made known to all. Wow. Nothing hidden. Nothing. Your greatest secrets, nothing will be hidden. Verse 18, he says, so pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. So he's talking about light, but now he's talking about how you hear. It's interesting that both sound waves and light waves are very similar in physics. But he's talking about a spiritual thing. We hear his word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. He says, be careful to those who listen to my teaching. Pay attention how you hear. In other words, we can hear in a wrong way. We can misunderstand. We can be thinking about other things or taking what he's saying and, and coloring it into something else. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But to those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. God is, it's very interesting. God is light, it says in 1 John. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Jesus said, I am the light of life. He, he, he is the light that came into the world. To, to What does light do? It allows people to see. We see three basic things revealed in this parable. Number one, God created physical light so that we could see. And God is spiritual light. He is spirit and he is light. And that light is the manifestation of what we call his glory. The glory of God is so incredible, is so bright. It says that nobody, we can't even really look on his face. It's just so bright and so glorious, so glorious. So light of God is glory. It reveals. And it's the light of the gospel is given to us so that we don't have to walk in darkness, but we can walk in the light of his salvation. So he's saying here, okay, you got light, you can receive it or you can reject it. You can take it and hide it or you can let it shine. What Jesus has done in your life, are you letting it shine in your life? We receive the light of the gospel and when, we're, when we can do that, then our words and our actions change and it shows what we have received. Number two, God is omnipresent, and so is his light. His light is everywhere. You can't hide in darkness anywhere from God. There's no darkness in him, so that that's why everything will be exposed. There's nothing we can hide in darkness from him. And number three, Jesus exhorts us to listen to his word, which we also called in another parable, it's God's seed. Because his word then will produce 
He said, if you, if you listen, it's, you're going to get more. You want more of God? You want more of his word? Be careful how you listen. It's amazing how easy it can be. We can daydream during preaching. We can daydream when we're reading the word. We can daydream even when we're praying to where we're not listening to God. He's saying, come on now, let's get serious about this light. Let it come into our life and bring what God wants to bring into us. When we don't listen to God, we will have nothing from him. It positions us also to even lose what we already have. I pray that the goodness of God will be so much in our private lives that his light will will shine into this dark world and make a real difference. How much we need that right now. It seems like so much that we hear on TV and different people, it's just lie after lie after lie. How do you get a lie to work? In darkness. So they can't see the truth. But God's light wants to permeate us. Let's be his light bearers. Well, there's another one in, in Luke 11 verses 33 through 36 and it talks about receiving the light and he says no one lights a lamp and then hides it or puts it under a basket instead a lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house then he goes on with more explanation here your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body when your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when it is unhealthy, your body is filled with darkness. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. If you are filled with light, with no dark corners, he says, if then your whole life will be radiant as though a floodlight were filling you with light. God is, Jesus is talking more about, it's a parable, so we have to kind of look at it for a minute, okay? Talks about receiving light. Okay, God gave us eyes so that we could see. Well, he also has given us spiritual eyes so that we can see the things of God. If we allow our eyes eyes to open, then we will be able to perceive and take in the things that, that God wants us to have. You know, it's, it's interesting. You ever notice how your pupils and your eye work? If you ever had to go get those drops put in your eyes for an eye exam, what happens when you walk into the light? You can't take it. You have to be able to adjust to it. There is God's light and his truth is so powerful. We have to be able to adjust our spiritual eyes to be able to take it in. We won't be able to comprehend it. We, we won't be able to take it in. He says, be careful about the light that you're looking at. The devil can disguise himself as an angel of light. And of course, what is he doing? He's lying. It's not the true light. Jesus is saying, open your heart. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be afraid. Just open your heart and make sure that you care enough to really listen to him. And even if he corrects you, it's going to help you. He's just showing you the truth. So God wants us to benefit from his light. On earth as it is in heaven. That's what parables are all about. You know, it talks about in heaven that there is no artificial light in heaven. It says the lamb is the light of heaven. Jesus himself is the light of heaven. And there's going to be a day after the millennial reign of Christ when there will be no more sun in the sky or stars that God himself will be the light of the world. It's, it's going to be a perfect light. You talk about a light without shadows. You know, if you have a light shining from one direction, it'll create a shadow behind you. But if you have omnipresent light, there is no shadow there. God's word is like that omnipresent light. It will leave, leave you in a place of illumination, of understanding, 
and leave you in a place where the devil cannot bring you into darkness to lie to you. God's parables are very, very sincere here about getting light into your life. Well, we're going to sing a song now talking about God's word, a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And we'll see you tomorrow for more of God's food for thought. God bless you. Thank you.